Uh, hey, welcome back everybody and welcome back to our online students. Today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at something called formula mass and molecular mass. Formula mass and molecular mass. And then we'll introduce something called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. And Avogadro's number is just one of these little nuggets that you cannot pass chemistry if you don't know this number. It's like your chemistry professor has like a staff and says, you shall not pass. You must know this number. It's, it's like a prerequisite for passing general chemistry. Now to get us started here, we have these two terms, molecular mass and formula mass. So molecular mass, molecular mass and formula mass. Molecular mass and formula mass. So what are these things? Okay, so molecular mass is if you take the masses of each of the elements and add them together. And an example of this is ammonia, where we have NH3. That's a nitrogen and three hydrogen atoms. And if we want to figure out the molecular mass of that, we would add a nitrogen and three hydrogens. So we'd say, all right, nitrogen. Nitrogen is like 14.01, I think, um, about, okay, um, atomic mass units. And then we would add that, add that to three times hydrogen. And hydrogen is like 1.0, is it eight? Yeah, rough, no, 1.008 atomic mass units. Okay, so if we take that, add all of the masses of these elements together, we get roughly about equal to 17.09 units, or atomic mass units. Okay, and we pat ourselves on the back and go, all right, that, that's good, I, I, I can do that. And then we take a look at formula mass, and formula mass here, an example would be um, calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is CaCl2, and we would add a calcium, which is, I think, 40-something, 40.08 units, and then we would add two chlorines to that, which is like 35.45 units, and if we, we add those all together, we get some number, and it's something like about 100 and 10, 110.98-ish units. Now you see what I did there. I added all the elements, and I added all the elements. See what I did there? Okay. But notice we have two different names. And you go, why? Isn't it the same thing? Nod your heads like this. It's the same thing. So why do we have two different names? This, this goes back to the olden days. Olden days when they had just discovered the wheel and Professor Locken was graduating from high school. They had different ways of doing things. And so molecular mass, this is when we have covalent compounds. Covalent compounds. And this is where we have ionic compounds. Ionic compounds. And you go, well, all right, that's fine. How do I know if something is covalent or if it's ionic? You wait for Alanis Morissette to make a song. Isn't it ionic, don't you think? It's like rain on your wedding day. I usually get paid not to sing. So, how do we recognize that something is ionic? Anybody know? Just eyeballing it? Yes, what he said. So electrons are being transferred from one thing to another. Electrons are going to be transferred from the calcium to the chlorine. That is correct. That is correct. But how do we know that? I mean, just eyeballing this, just looking at this formula, looking at that formula, is there a way that we can tell? You're absolutely correct. 
How can we, how can we identify these? Calcium and chlorine have opposite charges. Yeah, so chlorine here would be a minus and calcium would be um, a two plus. Yep, that is true. But then over here, this here is going to be a plus and this is going to be a three minus. So those are, mm. but you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so if it's a metal and a non-metal, Yes, so ionic is metal, it's metal, and non-metal. Okay, so metal and non-metal, covalent will generally, generally be non-metals. Okay, now this is a generalization, this is not 100% always true, but generally speaking, yeah, if you have a metal and a non-metal, it's going to be ionic and therefore we would use the term formula mass. Now, I'm just, I'm making kind of a, a deal about this because you'll see these terms used and some students scratch their heads and say, I don't know what the difference is. And okay, so that's the difference, but it doesn't matter because you're going to do the same thing anyway. So in the end, I guess it really doesn't matter. It really just, just doesn't matter. All right. Thank you for your help, all of you. That was awesome. All right. Now, how are we going to use this? Well, we're going to use this number in combination with this concept called a mole. Now, a mole is a specific unit of measurement. Mole. A mole is a specific unit of measurement. It's the SI unit for measurement, and we say that a mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. We could say atoms, we could say molecules, we could say formula units. Um, it, it's just a number. It's, it's kind of like a dozen is 12. It's just a number. And why do we use this number? The reason we use this number is because it's equal to, if we take this here and turn it into grams, if we add 110 grams of calcium chloride, it would be this many formula units of calcium chloride is why we do that. Now, a mole is, uh, or we also call this Avogadro's number. Um, stupid fact for you, Avogadro did not come up with this number. They just, they just named it after him. I think he came up with this spread that you put on toast. Is this green stuff? I'm here all week. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so it's Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is the same as the number of atoms and exactly 12 grams of carbon 12. Remember carbon 12? Remember carbon 12? 1 12th of a carbon 12 is one atomic mass unit. All right. Now, when we do these conversions and we go from particles to moles, we just do conversions. And, and so here is an example that says, okay, if I've got some number of particles and I want to turn that into moles, I just divide it by Avogadro's number. And if I want to go the opposite direction, then I multiply it by Avogadro's number. And some students say, well, how will I remember that? Because I'm not going to put that on the test. I mean, you'll have to do it, but I'm not going to put this on the test. How will you remember it? And the thing is, as long as you write out your units, Remember dimensional analysis, all those conversions that we did? If you write your units, your units will cancel and it'll work. It'll work. So you don't have to memorize this. I'm not a big fan of memorizing things. There's some things you should remember, should memorize. Like, I'm married. That's a good thing to remember, okay? But, but this stuff here, you should be able to just look at the units and cancel these out. All right, so here's an example. It says, here we have a sample of calcium chloride. We've got 2.59 times 10 to the 18th formula units. 
How many moles of calcium chloride do I have? Okay, all right, so that looks like math. 2.59 times 10 to the 18th formula units of calcium. Let's see, I'm just, I'm gonna put formula units of calcium chloride. Okay, calcium chloride. And I'm not even gonna look up there. I'm not even gonna look up there. And I wanna convert that into moles, some number moles of calcium chloride, okay? And I'm trying not to look, I'm trying not to look. Now, when I do dimensional analysis, this here is the units I wanna end up with, this here is the units I wanna get rid of. So what I want to end up with, that needs to be on the top. So I'm going to put moles up here. Okay, mole. Or I'll just call it mole, all right? And then formula units, this is what's going to cancel out. I'm going to have to put that down here. Formula units. Okay. So now I, I have my units. And one mole, I say one mole is so many things. So that's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 18th things for every mole. And then my units cancel out. 10 to the 23rd. Ha, ha, ha. See, I was, I was seeing who was paying attention. Okay, all right. I thought I was going to get all the way through this without making a mistake. Yeah, okay, all right. So now if I did this correctly, my units cancel out. And really it's just taking this number, dividing it by Avogadro's number. And when I do that, I end up with some number. And I came up with, this was 4.30 times 10 to the negative 6 moles of calcium chloride. And I pat myself on the back and I'm feeling pretty good. Got this, got this. Okay, so now in your textbook, it has a table that looks like this. And it shows you, depending on where you wanna go, all kinds of things you can do. And it's kind of impressive. It says, oh, okay, you wanna go from moles to atoms? Well, that's fine, you just multiply by sodium. No, by um, Avogadro's number. This is number de Avogadro, which is multiplied by Avogadro's number. And over here, like you want to go from moles to grams, well, then you multiply by the molar mass. And you say, okay, all right, I've got a photographic eidetic ident memory. Is that it? My wife has one of these things. She's got a photographic memory. She, like, remembers everything. It's amazing. It's like we're sitting there and we're like driving somewhere and she's like, do you know where you're going? And I'm like, yeah, I totally know where I'm going. And she's like, do you remember back in 1975, August 13th, it was a Saturday, you were lost. It's like, how do you remember this? <laughs> she's amazing, absolutely amazing like that. So she probably has this memorized. I don't, and you don't have to. Because as long as you write out the units, they'll cancel out and you don't have to memorize this. You don't have to memorize this. It's just, a, it's a thing, okay? You don't have to memorize that. Okay, so let's try this. Um, here is some baking soda. This is sodium bicarbonate. Oh, well, it starts out with potassium. Okay, so it says, how many moles of potassium atoms are present in 19.5 grams of potassium. Okay, all right, so I've got 19.5 grams, 19.5 grams of potassium. This will happen at least once this semester, I guarantee it. Um, potassium is a K. There's another element that starts with, this is not potassium, right? This is phosphorus, right? Okay, I'll, I'll goof that up somewhere at some point. 
So I've got 19.5 grams of potassium and I want to convert it into grams. Okay, now I know I want to, no, wait a minute. I want, to, I want to figure out how many moles. That's it, I want to figure out how many moles, okay. So I know that I want to get rid of grams, so I'm going to put grams of potassium down here because I want grams to cancel out. And, and then, okay, um, there's some number of grams of potassium per mole of potassium. That's a K there, okay, all right. Now, how do I know how many grams of potassium are there in a mole? This works because of Avogadro's number. How do I know? What, this number, it's some number. Where do I find that number? You're pointing, you're pointing, you're pointing up here, right? You're pointing at the periodic table, yes, yes. So if we look at our periodic table and we find potassium, nope, not there. We find potassium because it starts with a K. <laughs> it's like, who invented this stuff? All right, so there's potassium and it says 39.0983. So that is 39 point, point, did I mention I have a short term memory? Point 0.093. 39.0983. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now my grams should cancel and I should be left with moles of potassium. And so if I do this, I end up with um, 0 0.499 moles of potassium. Okay. All right, and I think the other one there with the sodium bicarbonate, we've already done that with this one here. That's the same thing. Just divide by Avogadro's number. Nope. Nope, we don't. Okay, I better do that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it says, how many formula units are present in 5.32 moles of baking soda? Okay, so I've got 5.32 moles of sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, that's baking soda. And okay, so I don't have that table memorized. I could call my wife or look, here's moles. That means it's gotta be down here. Mole, okay, of sodium. NaHCO3, all right, and then I want to figure out formula units, right? So one mole, one mole is so many formula units, that's going to be 6.022 times 10 to the 18th, 23rd, 23rd, okay, formula units, and that gives me some number, and when I did this, I came up with 3.204 times 10 to the 24th formula units. Okay. We're good. Awesome. Make sure my hair is good. We fix all that in, in post-production, right? I look like Bradley Cooper. <laughs> it's just amazing what they can do with Photoshop. Any questions, any concerns? Did you like Professor Lockton? Did you take your meds today? Ta-da!